Hi, my loves. I'm an manager, and welcome back to another episode of Sip and Simmer. We all may have our worries and concerns in life, but during the next 30 minutes, you're mine. We're here to have a drink, a snack, and a good time. <clears throat> now, during this episode of Sip and Simmer, we'll be making a lemon blueberry icebox cake with a green apple lemonade cocktail. Yes, this is the finale of No Bake Week. If you would like to contribute to the production of Sip and Simmer, my Venmo is Mrs. Anita Manager, and all the proceeds do go to making the drinks and the snacks that we make here together. Now tonight, as usual, we have the beautiful Sienna Rose joining us, but before we go on, I need a minute. Now, 78 years ago on July 6th, Anne Frank went up into the annex, um, so I thought that it would be prudent to talk about uh, Learning from your mistakes. Now, take that however you would like, whether it be a tyrant in the White House or just personal growth. We won't have to get political, but you know me, I'm going to anyway. Now, think back to the last time you made a mistake at work. Even if it was a minor one, like you were pouring yourself some coffee before a big meeting and it spilled onto the document and it was just a few minutes before you had to present it. Like that moment, you felt rushed, you felt panic, and you had the inconvenience of having to put everything back together in its right place. Now, nobody is immune to making mistakes. We are all human after all, except for myself. But if we simply apologize and carry on as before, we're in danger of repeating the same mistakes as before. When we don't learn from our mistakes, we inflict unnecessary stress on ourselves and others that it impacts. We risk losing people's confidence and trust in us. Now, the most important thing, personally, what I believe, is you must own your mistakes. You can't learn from a mistake until you've admitted that you've made one. So take a deep breath, admit your mistakes, and then take ownership of it. Inform everybody that it may have uh, affected. Apologize and tell them that you're working on a solution. Now, the best way to refrain from making the error is how you view your mistakes determines the way that you react to them and what to do next. Chances are you'll view your error as a purely negative light as long as the initial shock and discomfort is still settling with you. But if you can reframe your mistake into an opportunity to learn, it'll motivate you uh, to become more knowledgeable and resilient and it's the only way that you can move on from that mistake is not having that initial hard feeling that you have about making that mistake. And once you've acknowledged it, you can now think about what you're going to do to keep it from happening again. Um, you need to really analyze that mistake and really think about what caused you to get to that mistake. What was I trying to do? What went wrong? When did it go wrong? And why did it go wrong? Now, the most important thing is putting these, I keep on saying the most important thing, the most important thing about that part is now putting what that mistake taught you into practice. Now, the danger at this stage is that work pressure forces you back into a routine and your habitual out behaviors. Now, learning your lesson is one thing, but putting it into practice is a completely different thing. Chances are acting on what you've learned will require the discipline and motivation to get your habits to change and you can relearn how you are working that situation. Now, Doing so will help you avoid self-sabotage, which I don't know about you, but I'm very guilty of in the future, and it will allow you to reap the rewards and benefits of implementing this into your work practices. Now, this is the part that can keep you motivated, and it's reviewing your progress. Yes, because even if it was a little mistake, progress away from that mistake is progress nonetheless. Now, you have to try out several ways of putting what you've learned into practice, of course, because there's no one path for you to correct your mistake. Um, I personally find that when I make a mistake, when particularly it comes to work, um, is to create a checklist, like a to-do list. And it's a great tool for pinpointing the most effective solutions. From there, you can just monitor what you've been doing and its efficiency, and if not, you can rework your whole checklist. It's not written in stone. Um, but it is our nature as humans to make mistakes, so don't get down on yourself. Um, Personally, one last thing about it is I find that if I ask somebody else for help to hold me accountable for what I've been doing wrong and what I've been trying to grow from, it'll help you stay committed to your new course that you have created for yourself. 
Now, with that being said, let's, I'm just adjusting my rug over here. Okay, with that being said, let's get started on our cocktail, shall we? Now, tonight, so last night we made a, um, uh, an apple, an apple cranberry drink that tasted just like the red Jolly Rancher. Now tonight, because we're gonna stay on track with the green apple um, vodka, it actually tastes exactly like the green Jolly Rancher, but I didn't do it on purpose, I swear. So what we're gonna do tonight is we have three ounces of simple syrup that we're gonna get into the shaker. We have two ounces of lemon juice, and finally three ounces of the apple vodka. And that's it. And it's gonna be super tart. So if you don't like tart, what I would suggest doing is cutting back on the lemon juice and increasing the simple syrup, and it'll definitely change that flavor. Give that a good shake. That's good enough. All right. Beautiful. I remember the strainer thingy because who knows what it's called. I am so excited. I just sampled it this afternoon. It was delicious. Okay. All right, I get it. It's a bartender strainer. I get it. Thank you. Okay, so without further ado, let's welcome the beautiful Sienna Rose. Well, hello. That's it? That's it. Oh, so simple tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, I was waiting for it. I was waiting to get yelled at or something. I don't know. And then I'm still young. <laughs> Okay, just in case you have any new viewers, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on social media? You guys can find me, as always, on all my social media, at Sienna Rose Official. That's S-I-E, double N-A, Rose Like the Flower, and what? Official. official. Because she is, what? Official. Thank you, and that includes the Venmo. Yes. Mm -hmm. I helped you out tonight. I responded when I was supposed to, I didn't well, leave you in the dust, the almost. sound was on time. Almost. Uh -huh. it was, it, it's, it's working out. Uh, I'm yes. happy with it. Yeah. I'm happy with it. Now, where can everybody find you? As usual, you can find me everywhere at Mrs. Anita Manager. That's Facebook, Twitter. Don't go to the Twitter. Instagram, my website, YouTube, everywhere. Mrs. Anita Manager. Keep it simple. Love it. All right. So, I'm so excited for you to try this. So. Me too. Now you should add some like green food coloring to it to really like match the. the green well, I didn't Jolly even Ranger. realize that it tasted like the green Jolly Rancher until mm -hmm. I ate it. Oh. And then I altered it to actually taste like it. Okay. All right. Well, so, cheers. cheers. It smells delicious. Oh. Doesn't it taste just like it. Oh wow! Right? Wow. Okay. Oh, that's dangerous. So. And as usual, mm -hmm. I made extra just in of case. Course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so tonight we're going to be making um, a lemon blueberry icebox cake. Okay, now so, what is an icebox cake? So an icebox cake is pretty much a dairy-based cake. I use the term cake loosely. Okay. Um, that sets in the refrigerator and thickens up. So usually they have graham crackers, Nilla wafers. Oh, oh my, already. You didn't even realize that you said it. I didn't. Now if we have anybody new here, the word of the day, as always, is thick. So whenever we say thick, if you're drinking along with us, take a drink. So the, the best part about an icebox cake is that you can make it the day before, two days before, uh -huh. and it just gets better. Ooh, I love that. There's no baking involved. Mm -hmm. This one specifically, we do have a little bit of cooking involved. But no baking. But no baking. So we delivered on a promise of no bake week. Right. But also, if you wanted to cheat, you could also buy in the baking aisle, they have those cans of like already made like pie fillings. Pie fillings. There's blueberry, pie there's okay. apple, there's strawberry, raspberry. It sure. comes in a can with a yellow label and it's literally everything that goes into a pie in a can. Is you, it like the preservatives? Is that it's, what it's, it's called? It's kind of like a preservative, okay. but it doesn't have um, the, the, I think gelatin or something in it. It doesn't okay. have something in it. So it's, it's basically a pie filling. So we're going to be making a very basic pie filling okay. to put into the icebox cake. Got it. All right. Mm -hmm. So what you need for this is you need a dish that can go in the refrigerator. Okay. Um, and that's, I mean, 
That's it? It's so simple. Wow. All right, so why don't we start with the berry sauce? Okay. All right, so that's gonna be on you. Me? Okay. Yes, that means. So, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a frying pan. You're gonna need two teaspoons of cornstarch. Hey, I only got two hands. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going. Along. I know, but I like to show it as you say. Okay. All right, cornstarch. You got two teaspoons of cornstarch. You got. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you this fresh squeezed lemon juice. Okay. Um, you're gonna need a tablespoon of water. You need two tablespoons of sugar and a teaspoon of lemon zest. So while you are getting this together, I will zest the lemon for you. Okay. So the most important thing when you're cooking, baking, or doing anything with cornstarch is you want to dissolve it first. Right. We did this yesterday. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your two teaspoons of cornstarch and you're going to dissolve it into your one tablespoon of water. Okay. Now, if we learned from yesterday, <laughs> we're just going to... It's fine. You said that yesterday as well. All right. So okay. cornstarch is hydrophobic. What'd you call me? <laughs> Which just means that it's hard to dissolve into the water or okay. any liquid for that matter. So what you want to do is you always want to dissolve it first so that way you don't get clumps. The whole point of having cornstarch in it is it for is for it to thicken. Oh, okay. Okay, so. I think that's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Great. Let me just make sure of that. Mm -hmm. So it's super important for you to get all of the cornstarch in there so that way you have the right consistency because once you put it into the icebox cake, or into the, the cream base of the icebox cake. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not thick enough, uh -huh. what's gonna happen is it's gonna make it dilute and it's gonna be runny. Ooh, and the whole point is that, that you can cut into it and serve it. Like a cake. Like a cake, okay. right. Um, again, you wanna make this a day or two beforehand and just mm -hmm. let it sit in the fridge. Okay. All right, so if you would turn on your pan, so, um, what we're going to do first is we're going to heat up the blueberries so they begin to pop. <clears throat> so when you say pop. So when you heat up blueberries, they actually, like, not, like, oh, explode. Well, okay. they, just, they just burst open. Okay. All right? Mm-hmm. So, you want to throw the blueberries into the pot. Okay, you don't need anything in the pan first, right? No, no. butter, no nothing? Just nope. Straight blueberries into the pan. And because this is fresh lemon juice, I'm getting the seeds out. Ooh. All right, so give that a pour right on top just to create right some. Right over it? Yep. All right. So what that's going to do is that's going to create some moisture in the pan and um, allow it to steam a little bit mm -hmm. and allow those blueberries to start opening up. So you're going to do that in a medium heat. Okay. All right, give that a toss. Perfect. Ooh. And since I spoke about the beautiful Anne Frank earlier, and uh -huh. I said that it was 78 years since she went with her family into the annex. Mm -hmm. I thought that it would be fun to have our executive producer, Nick, mm -hmm. come up with questions about Anne Frank. Okay. So I'm trying to keep it fresh, keep it different. Love it. You know, like, now I read her diary in the fifth grade. <laughs> it's been quite a few years since then. So we're gonna see how this goes. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab this stem off the blueberry. Okay. And would you mind, I'll just take the whole thing out. Would you mind just giving it a quick stir with the rubber spatula and I'll sure. ask you your first question. Okay. Okay. So, Anne was just a nickname. What oh. was her full name? Oh. Was it Annalise Marie Frank? Okay. Antoinette Marie Frank. I'm sensing a pattern. Anna Maria Frank. Okay. Or Anne Mary Frank. All right. Um, so don't forget, so this was like 1942. Right. So, if that helps you with the name. I mean, th those are all kind of like old tiny names. Annalise, Antoinette. That's my mom's real name. Mm-hmm. Mm. Fun fact. Just, I don't know. Does anybody in the chat room know what her real name was? I feel, I definitely am going to go with something Marie Frank. Okay. Because that seems to be most of the answers. Okay. So Before, I think I'm going to get rid of Mary. Just get rid of Mary. All right. Bye, Mary. Mm -hmm. All right. Before we go on, so once your blueberries start to explode, you're going to start to get like a purple like film on the pot. Uh -huh. That's when you're going to throw your sugar in. Okay. So what that's going to do is it's going to start to absorb those flavors, but it's going to slow down the cooking. Oh. So if you want to just sprinkle the sugar over the top. Right over top. Yep. Okay. Perfect. The whole thing? Yep. The whole thing. Like, this is such an easy recipe. This is how I make my jam. This is how I make my preserves. 
the difference between jam and preserves is one, you run through a sieve. Mm -hmm. um, so that way you get out all the seeds and all the skins and everything. But preserves are literally just the berries broken down with a little bit of lemon juice and sugar. So, oh, yeah, it's the more you know. It's very simple. And I do it all the time. I'm really excited to do it this summer with all of our tomatoes. Mm. Right? Yes. All okay, right. So, Anne was just her nickname. What was Anne Frank's full name? Was it Annalise Marie Frank? Mm -hmm. Was it Antoinette Marie Frank? Maybe. Was it Anna, Anna Marie Frank? Mm -hmm. But she's already said goodbye to Anne Mary Frank. Bye, right. Mary. Okay. No Marys. Well, maybe. We'll see. Now, do we have anybody answering in the comment section? Comment below what you think the answer is to help me out so I don't seem completely stupid. <laughs> so, I will give you guys a hint. Okay. They do say it in the introduction to the book. Fifth grade. Many years ago. I actually read it like three years ago, I think, okay. when we were living in Seattle. I don't know what provoked me to read it, but I reread it. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, it's great literature. So, do you want to give us an answer? Sure. Uh, let's go with... I don't know why I'm drawn to Antoinette, but I also really think it would be Annalise. I'm going to go with Antoinette uh, Marie Frank. Of course it's wrong. Oh. Of course. Hey, wait, let me guess, let me guess. I'm gonna go with, um, um, no, I'm gonna go with, uh, Annalise Marie. All right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, I just read well, the book a few years ago, so. I was almost close. Okay, so, once we have let our sugar dissolve, Which what we're did. gonna do now is, because the blueberries are exploding, they're releasing a lot of moisture, mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna take our cornstarch water mix, and we're gonna pour that over top. Okay. And give it a stir. And then once that's incorporated, mm -hmm. we're just gonna let it sit. That's it? That's that's it. Oh wow. Okay. And that's the hard part of this recipe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Love it. Alright, so um, just make sure that you scrape down the sides. Mm -hmm. A lot of the flavor will bubble up to the top and then stick to the sides of your pan. Um, so just make sure that when you are cooking it, you're using a rubber spatula that is heat resistant. Right. And scrape down the sides of the pan and give it a little toss just to really get all those really fresh blueberry flavors all in there. Okay, so why don't I start on the base of the cake and okay. then you can jump in and throw some questions at me. Let's do it. Okay, so for the base of the cake, we have two cups of sugar. Mm -hmm. That's a big old lie. Yeah. This is not sugar. No, it's not. We have two cups of heavy cream. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a quarter cup of confectionery sugar. There we go. There's actually no like granulated sugar in this at all. I don't even know where I was going with that. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, actually, I I forgot. I need to throw some zest into that. Yes. So if, zest it up. If you don't have a microplane at home, you can skip this and add like a quarter of a teaspoon um, extra of the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. But I would strongly suggest you getting a microplane. They are fantastic for not only zesting uh, citrus fruits. But this is what I grate my Parmesan cheese with. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I grate chocolate with this. Yes. It is such a great investment. And they're like, it's very handy. They're like eight bucks. Right. And they're all dishwasher safe, so you don't need, well, this one is. I don't, like I'm the manufacturer of all <laughs> right. the microplanes. All right, I'm just gonna give that a shot. And if you don't know what a microplane is, it is It's a very small cheese grater. It's a super fine cheese grater. Be very careful because they are sharp. Are sharp. Yeah. Oh my. Learn that the hard way. Yes, you do. All right, so. This smells so good. Back to the base of the cake. This is basically like a really thick whipped cream. Well. Oh, well, mm -hmm. there it is. Okay, so. And this, we're gonna put the juice of one lemon. Okay. Okay, so for this, I like to use, you know I love to cheat with the lemon juice. Right. For something like this, you really wanna use something fresh. So. Yes, you can use the bottled lemon juice, but if you can go out and buy a fresh lemon, it will be worth its weight in gold. Love it. It makes a really big difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna squeeze this directly into the um, heavy cream. And mm -hmm. you wanna work quickly once you do this because citrus or acid really does curdle fresh cream Ooh. quickly. Oh, wow. So once you get this going, you really Look want to Look at those muscles. Uh, she's a man. Oh. 
Can't relate. <laughs> okay, so I've got all of that in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a quick whip. Okay. And I think while you give that a quick whip, why don't we move on to question number two? Yeah. So let's do it. Okay, so. I'm sorry to cut you off. Okay. So before I whip it into that full stiff peak, uh -huh. what I'd like to do is just whip it right. to a thick, into shape. Well, no, to a thick consistency. Oh, well, there we are. Thank you. All okay. right. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whip it until it just starts to become dense. Every time you say whip it, I just think of the song in the Legally Blonde musical. That's just where my mind goes. So I, I think, start singing it in I my think head and I stop good. listening to you. So <laughs> don't say anything important after whip it. Okay, so you just want to get thick, and for that... Okay, mm -hmm. so the reason I like to do that is because it allows the, um, the acid uh -huh. in the, uh, the lemon juice right. to start take a, taking effect in the um, heavy whipping cream. Okay. And also it will give it a more dense texture mm. when we put it in the refrigerator. Okay. So let it sit for a minute and then fully whip it. Whip it good. Okay. All right. Now I'm ready, Are you ready for the question? question. Yes. Okay. Now, question number two, if you're playing along with us. Where was the Frank family uh, originally from? Were they from A, Amsterdam, B, Germany, C, Austria, or D, Poland? Again. Well, now I'm embarrassed because I was like, I know the answer to this, mm -hmm. and my option in my head wasn't, or my answer in my head was not even an option. What was the option in your head? I thought it was Hungary. Well, that's around there. Yeah. Okay. Again, the possible options are <laughs> Amsterdam, Germany, Austria, or Poland. All right. If anybody out there can help me, because now I feel like a fool that I boasted about reading the book three years ago. I remembered her name. Well, you know. Okay, gal. Okay, so while you guys are coming up with your answers, I'm going to just finish zesting the second lemon, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna get that in there. So now what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna whip it up into the full stiff peak. Right. All right, so we have just saying C, Austria. Okay. Just is usually right. I can see that. Austria, I think, is by... Hungary. I'm not gonna pretend like I know where Austria is. I know it's in Europe. Right? Okay, so yeah. Max is Poland, and I know that she says it like 47 times in the beginning of the book. Okay. Um, and now I feel like a fool. Well, act a fool, girl. Okay, so in case you guys missed it, my question from C actually, we can turn this off and now that's just gonna sit. Okay, perfect. So once it starts to, once your uh, berry sauce, and you can do this with literally nice. any berry. Once it starts to collect, we need a feature. This doesn't work. Okay. What kind of what kind of production? This is on our iPhone. I know. Once your berry drink. starts to collect and create like a um, almost like a like a gelatin kind of consistency. Okay. You're gonna turn it off, and I like to cheat. I scrape it into a clean bowl and pop it in the refrigerator, and when it comes out, it's gonna oh, look yeah. like this. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be super super glossy. And it is going to be, are you ready with the, the sound effect? It is going to be super thick. Ooh, I love that. Okay, so the okay. reason for that is because this is not being baked. The most important thing is the consistency of everything. So that way it holds up after you take it out of the fridge. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we have Ellen helping me out here. Okay. So where is the Anne Frank, or where is Anne Frank's family originally Where's they from? from? Right. The options again are Amsterdam, Germany, Austria, and Poland. Thank you. Okay. Ellen is saying Amsterdam. Does that help you at all? No, because now I have everybody saying a different answer. Okay, great. Anything you want to eliminate? I'm going to eliminate Germany. Bye, Germany. It's been nice. But, uh, you're gone. I may have made a mistake. With? So, I 
I said stiff peels like three times. Uh huh. Because in my head, I'm like, oh, this is whipped cream. It is not going to get stiff. Okay. <laughs> I completely forgot because <laughs> because of the lemon juice and everything, it's going to get like frothy, but you're not going to get stiff peaks. Mm -hmm. It's going to set settle up in the refrigerator. Okay. Or set up. Sure. Okay. I don't know. Okay, since all of you gave me a different answer, I'm gonna go with my gut. Okay. Um, Which I'm is... pretty sure that Jess also said this. I'm gonna go with Austria. And that is. Uh, so I'm sorry, but that's wrong, girl. The correct answer is actually Germany. Was it really? Yeah, the one you just downright eliminated. Because I remember reading that like they were coming into where she was. The Nazis were coming into where she was. In the building? Yeah. But in Germany. Yeah. Okay. Well, Anne's father was a German businessman who served in the German army during World War II. Oh, uh, sorry, World War I. Um, in the face of the Nazis rising, he moved his family to Amsterdam in the autumn of 1993. Fun so that's what you're thinking of. Okay. Mm -hmm. 1933. 1933. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, that's really late for that to be happening. I was like, I feel like that's impossible. <laughs> right? Well, 1933. Okay. So. We have our berry mix, and like I said, you can do this with any berry. Mm -hmm. We have our whipped cream mix. Okay. And then our final ingredient is graham crackers. Ooh. That's it. And what you're gonna do now is you're basically going to make a dessert lasagna. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you want to keep on going with the questions and also do it since you're doing so well? Okay. So question number three. Anne received a diary as a present for her 13th birthday, for which she became famous for. Uh, what was the date she received the present, aka when's her birthday? The answers are uh, Ju July 13th, 1942, June 12th, 1942, August 10th, 1942, or June 14th, 1942. And they're out of order to make it extra difficult oh for you. Oh my goodness, okay. Yes. Again, the possible answers are July 13th, June 12th, August 10th, or June 14th, all of 1942. Okay. Wow. All right. So while you guys are thinking, mm -hmm. all right, so I'm just going to explain what we're doing here. Okay. So we've got our cream mixture in the bottom of the pan here. Right. What you want to make sure that you do, because like I keep on saying, because I don't want you to try and eat this immediately after making it is it is going to settle in the refrigerator. Okay. So you want to make sure that your graham crackers are going directly onto the cream every time. Okay. So that way it softens them and it will make them swell a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that way you have, again, the right consistency for the cake. Right. Like this isn't baking, but it is important for you to follow the steps so that way you get the right result. Mm -hmm. That's right. When you cut into it, it's like a cake and doesn't all just ooze apart. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. This is not served with an ice cream scoop. It's served what? with a, a I mean pie serve. You could serve it with ice cream, that'd be delicious. You can serve anything with ice cream. I mean, not anything, but almost anything we make on the show. I'd probably eat pickles with ice cream. That's gross. That is absolutely gross. I just like ice cream. Mm-hmm. Now, I see you stalling for time because you don't want to answer the question. Okay. But Jess is saying August 10th. Does that help you at all? No, because I could have sworn that her birthday was near mine. And coincidentally, my birthday is this Sunday, July 12th. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking that it was July 13th. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's just because I'm selfish and I think about my birthday a lot. Maybe. Um, now, do you remember the month? Or were you drawn to the day? Because June 12th is also an option. Right, and my birthday is July 12th, and maybe that's where I was making the correlation? Maybe, I don't know. All right, so, so far all we have is just with August. Mm -hmm. um, for the sake of time, I'm gonna just give you my answer. Let's do it. And I'm gonna go with is... what you said and your suggestion. To oh, I didn't, I didn't, no, I didn't in, suggest in, in anything. Your, in your assistance in my thought process. Maybe I'm throwing you off the course. I'm gonna go with June 12th. Well, that is correct. Yes. You're welcome, I totally helped you with that. The correct answer is June 12th. Anne received the present on June 12, 1942, uh, just a few weeks before her family went into hiding. The more you know. Mm -hmm. Now, are you ready to just finish this off with question number four? Um, as you plate this so beautifully? Let me just give a quick... Update? Update on okay. my, my progress. Oh. 
Okay, so I've got the cream on the bottom. I've got a layer of graham crackers on top of that. Mm -hmm. I've got the entire mix of the uh, blueberry compote. The whole thing. The whole thing. You're just gonna do one layer of that. One layer. Right, right in the middle. Yep. Mm. And then I'm going to put the graham cracker layer on top of the blueberries and then another layer of cream. Okay, so the graham crackers act like a barrier between the cream and the blueberries. Yeah. So it doesn't, like, mix. Sure. Okay. Sure. We'll go with that. Yeah, because I said it, so. It's a thing. Okay, are you ready for your fourth question? I uh, guess. Okay. Question number four is, Anne wrote two versions of her diary, known as version A and version B. When was the second version written? Was it A, 1942, B, 1944, C, 1946, or D, 1948? And these are in chronological order. So 42, 44, 46, 48. Okay. So if anybody out there wants to help, I am mm -hmm. very happy to take it. I feel like it would be easier if we cheated. I knew the answer. Right? Now, I'm very curious, like, two versions of your diary, do you have, like, is there, like, a different ending to one? I, like, I don't know. That's... Two versions of a diary? I don't know. Okay, so, while you guys are thinking, before I give my answer, mm -hmm. so this is what the final product is going to look like. Make sure that however you finish the whipped cream on top mm -hmm. is how you want it to look when you serve it okay. because if you are not baking it. So this is what Was it's it? gonna look like. So if you wanna like give it a little design, what I'm going to do to finish it off is I'm going to crush some graham crackers mm -hmm. and sprinkle those on top. And then I'm gonna throw a little bit more lemon zest on Ooh, it yes. because we love tart. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna call it a day. So okay. we have just saying 1948. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else? Going once. Going, Going twice. twice. Oh, well, I guess two versions can be like the one that was written and the one that was published. Maybe she didn't necessarily write two versions. I think she did. Oh, but maybe she did. Okay, I don't know. What do I know? I'm naturally a blonde. Don't okay. let this fool you. So, just to say 48. Okay. I'm, I was assuming that it was after the war. So, I'm going to agree with Jess. I'm going to go with 48. Uh, that answer is uh, unfortunately incorrect. The correct answer is 1944. Anne rewrote her diary in 1944 after hearing a call on the radio for people to save their war wartime diaries in order to help document the suffering of Nazi occupation once the war was over. In the second version known as B, Anne omits part of um, part of a while, oh part of A, sorry, she admits part of A while also adding new sections. Okay, cool. I wonder which is the version that we read. I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if it says it in the book. I wonder if you can read both. I don't know. That's something to look into. Well, on this episode of Know Your History. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe we should just change this to drug history. Right? Okay, so. This is our final product. What we're going to do is you oh, want to put cool. it in the refrigerator mm -hmm. for at least six hours. At least. At least. Okay. Do not try and eat it before that because it will be a sloppy mess. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I almost said something not so nice. You're welcome. Oh. I refrained. Okay. Okay. So thank you guys again for watching Sip and Simmer with the beautiful Sienna Rose yeah. and myself. As always, these episodes will be put up onto our uh, YouTube page. Mm -hmm. um, we will see you back here on Sunday for my birthday. That's right. So mm -hmm. all the episodes next week are going to be based on birthday snacks. Yes. All right. So thank you again for hanging out. Of course. Uh, again, you could follow her on all of her social media at Sienna Rose Official. You can follow me at Mrs. Anita Manager. I never forgot. I'm Anita Manager and you guys are amazing. Love you. Good night, guys. You want to taste this? Okay. I mean, I gloss. Uh, Put this in the refrigerator now because I I want it.